Good morning. Uh, this is SK Ghosh. I would like to welcome you to our web seminar this morning uh, on the topic that you see on the slide, wind and seismic design of two-way concrete slab systems. We will do part one today uh, on wind and design category B, seismic design, part two, for design category C and D, seismic design will be uh, on Thursday. Talking about structures like you see in the picture. Flat, flat plate column framing is evident. Flat plate is a slab without beams, without any thickening of the slab that is supported directly on columns. So you see very clearly in the picture the flat plate column frames. What you don't see all that clearly is until you look here that there is a shear wall core uh, in the middle of the structure. Okay. Now, uh, if you are in a uh, in an area of low to moderate seismicity that code may or may not be there. We have flat plate column frames without shear walls. Uh, that, is, that is quite <laughs> quite desirable. Uh, but, but if it is a high seismic area for reasons that I'll explain, there will be a shear wall code. It doesn't have to be shear walls. It can be made of steel brace frame. Uh, but, but there will be some kind of a code. Uh, taking the seismic forces. Now, given a structure like that, <clears throat> if the design category is lower than D, we have a choice of uh, making the flat plate column frames part of the lateral force resisting system or taking the entire wind or seismic forces on the shear wall core. Okay. Now, if we make the latter choice, so we have flat plate column frames and shear walls in our building, we choose to take the entire wind on the or the entire seismic forces on the shear wall core, leaving the frames to carry gravity only. In that case, obviously, our slabs will be designed for gravity only. So that is something we are able to do and, and, and this is something I would like to illustrate uh, in the seminars. Uh, then uh, if one makes the choice of given a building as I started with uh, and given the fact that the design category is lower than D, uh, our choice would be to take the wind or the seismic forces uh, uh, on the uh, make these slab column frame part of the wind or seismic force resisting system. Okay, if we choose to do that, then the slabs will have to be designed for gravity and for wind or the seismic forces. Okay, and and this is something I want to illustrate. Now, the difference between design category B seismic forces and design category C seismic forces is that when a slab column frame is part of the seismic force resisting system of a building assigned to design category C, there are minimum detailing requirements given in ACI 318 that we have to comply with. Okay. So as we go from design category B to C, that's what changes. And, and this is something I would like to illustrate on Thursday, what those detailing requirements are, what they do to the reinforcement layout and so forth. And then if our design category is D or above, <laughs> now the slab column frames cannot be made part of the seismic force resisting system. Nowhere in SCI 318 you say that explicitly said, but I will point out uh, uh, where the restriction really is. And, and that will again be on Thursday. 